All right, uh, let's bring the meeting to order. Um, Ms. Gore, will you uh, let the record reflect that all board members are present and accounted for? Uh, if you'll stand with me, we will say the Pledge of Allegiance. And then I'll ask uh, Mr. Hill to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You'll remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, my agenda item says there are presentations. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good evening. Hello, Happy hello. School Board Appreciation Month Woohoo. from your principals officially. We are excited to be able to take a moment just to tell you thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for unlocking opportunities for us and our students and our families and the parents every day. Your work matters and you know our jobs are not easy, but I think I can speak on behalf of all four of us to say that it's much better because of you. So thank you for what you do. We do have a little swag bag for you full of goodies from all four schools. So feel free to look through that bag in a little while and you have a cupcake to enjoy as well. And then we have a brief little thank you video from AES to share with you. Thank you guys for what you do. Good evening. Let this meeting come to order. Tonight, our meeting will consist of a list of requests by our superintendent, Mr. Jeff Mayo, for the board to approve or deny. Mr. Mayo, you may begin with your first request to the board. Our students would like to attend field trips off campus. Okay, your next request. Our teachers do such an awesome job. Can we give them bonuses? Your request is approved. <laughs> Next request. Our, our schools are in need of upgrades to make them even better. We approve. Next request. Our schools are in need of more teachers. Can we hire more? And your last request. Our teachers make enough lunches from home. Can we provide them with lunch each quarter? Approved! Thank you for joining us tonight. This meeting is adjourned. to add a just a few moments so we can eat our cupcakes I'm just kidding uh, <laughs> all right uh, Ms. Gore do we have any citizens comments we do not, we do not. we'll keep going uh, so next is the approval of a, the agenda do I have a motion to approve the agenda Mr. Chair so move second. a motion by Dr. Viox second by Ms. Conley any discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed the ayes have it the motion passes I'll move to reports. Uh, chairman's report. Uh, just a couple of things on the chairman's report. I have had this with me since we came back from Nashville, uh, and this is this is our plaque that says they were actually a member of the, of the state school board. So uh, we need to display that in the foyer uh, for all to see. I don't know where this goes, but 
Uh, I'll get that in Ms. Gore's hands, uh, so you can put that wherever that goes, Ms. Gore. Thank you. Uh, really, uh, just a couple of things that I'd just like to say, and I know the board would say this, uh, you know, in, the, in light of the last uh, snowmageddon uh, I, I really appreciated uh, being uh, the husband of a teacher uh, the father of students uh, just how this was handled and managed by uh, you mr mayo by your staff uh, by the entire group of people that did, that really puts this together and makes this happen and informs our parents uh, I, I love the way that you uh, put the things out there to, for our parents to see and in and, and a timely manner for them to make decisions about uh, them and us to make decisions as a parent about um, uh, getting our kids to school and all the things that come with that. So thank you for uh, uh, for getting that done. I appreciate uh, you and Mr. Hill and your creativity in, uh, in putting those videos together. Uh, those are quite entertaining and usually a point of uh, laughter within our family uh, around, the, around the dinner table. So thanks for doing that as well. But uh, kudos to you all for what you do and how you do it. And uh, they make even stuff like this fun and enjoyable and not just a, uh, a drab thing. And so keep up the good work. We expect uh, to see those regularly. <laughs> Um, and, and really, uh, that, that's really it. I, I, I guess I'm just reminded um, on an ongoing basis about just how good things are at ACS. Uh, and that you just all cover your bases so well. I'll say that to you, principals that you're here, you cover your bases so well. Uh, there's never a question about uh, what has to happen or, or if people are going to be informed or what the next steps are when something happens in your schools. You just know what to do and you do it well. You don't surprise our parents. You listen to our parents and I uh, have gotten to see that throughout all the different schools and I'm just really thankful that that happens. Um, and it usually goes, um, uh, not a lot of people talk about it. Not a lot of people talk about things when they're going good, right? They, you just roll on and do your jobs. It's only when something crazy happens or something bad happens. And the good thing is, is not a lot of bad things happen because you just handle it and manage it. And so I'm really thankful for uh, you and your staff. The people you've chosen to be in these positions are really top of their game. And so thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, and that's all I have for uh, Chairman's report, uh, Superintendent's report. Okay. I've got a few items. Um, first of all, uh, I just want to say that um, as superintendent and central office and principals have acknowledged, I want to acknowledge on behalf of our central office employees uh, the value that, we, that you all bring to our, our district and your support. Uh, because of the way you support us, we're able to do the things that you just alluded to and mentioned and know that you all are going to uh, support us and back us on that. and. Uh, it, it, it becomes very natural for us because we know that you all are, you know, just waiting for us to take care of our business and what we're hired to do. And, you know, as a superintendent, I appreciate that. And I know the principals uh, appreciate that as well. So I do appreciate those uh, complimentary remarks. Um, I'm fresh out of videos tonight, I have to say. I'm, I'm, I'm fresh out. We're going to have to uh, re reconvene at another point. But, uh, again, we appreciate you, and uh, we have a very small token of appreciation for y'all. The, the uh, plants here kind of represent uh, spring, maybe, that we're hoping we're kind of done with the snow. We've had a lot of it. We got it all at one time this year, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, just uh, I, that's one of my things when I came back after Christmas, I thought I need a plant in my office. I need some life, you know, in, in my office. Uh, and so, um, I don't know, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll mean the same to you. that It's some, something live and living and especially after we've been through um, this, you know, nice but uh, overdue break. You know, I was ready to come back. I don't know if everybody else was, but I, I certainly was. But uh, anyway, I just want to say that uh, to you all. I, I really appreciate your support and uh, as does the central office staff and, and the principals. You allow us to do our jobs. You don't interfere with that. You support us. You ask questions. You ask great questions. We try to answer them and, and act on them um, as appropriate. But uh, that, that support allows us to do the things that, that, that we're able to do every day. Um, I do want to say, uh, I do want to give a shout out to Mr. Ruff and the operations staff and the plant managers and um, all the principals because um, yesterday we spent our whole day 
more so them than me. I'm just giving directions. You know, they're doing the work. And Ms. V. Ox, who is our school nurse uh, coordinator, uh, she, she was on the ground helping us. Ms. Earl, our cafeteria uh, supervisor, trying to get those menus and everything ready. So, you know, we started pretty early yesterday morning with the, the water advisory, and we were kind of on pins ends as to whether or not we're going to be able to go to school today because uh, we didn't know if we had water pressure to flush the toilets. And, you know, those are, that's a pretty important thing when you're running schools with, you know, the 4,800 kids that we have. You want to be able to flush those toilets. And, uh, but anyway, they were on top of it all day long. You know, we pulled our plan together. We, uh, thanks to all these people that I just mentioned, uh, everybody was on target, you know, on point at all points during the day. So we were able to release a plan that I was very proud of yesterday afternoon to our to our stakeholders. And uh, luckily that's been lifted. You all received notification today that the water boil advisory has been lifted. So uh, we will be fully operational tomorrow. Of course, our, our staff, a lot of people don't recognize this or realize this, but uh, we have to go through a process of cleaning out and purging those water lines for all water access, like our water fountains, our uh, sinks in the kitchen that we cook with and those kinds of things. All that has to be purged before we can actually use that, even though the water boil advisory has been lifted. So all of that's probably done by now, and it will definitely be fully, will definitely be fully operational tomorrow. So I appreciate all of you that were part of that, um, taking, taking care of that and getting it done. Um, I also just want to thank all of our employees again. We were off to a great start, second semester. Uh, we haven't worked a lot, so that, I guess that's a great start. You know, we off for two weeks, came back for a few days, got another week off. So I think employees should be really motivated and revved up, you know, to really get us uh, through this next quarter to spring break. So I uh, also want to thank them again for we haven't met since uh, we were officially named a top workplace again this year, and that's totally employee perception. And that's, uh, as, as I've stated before, is one of the most meaningful things to me as a leader that, that the employees feel like this is a great place to work. Uh, we were number two this year, so I was, I was a little scorned by that, but we were still the top school district in the metro area because the person that beat us out was actually a corporation uh, in, in Memphis. So uh, we're gonna strive for that number one spot again and uh, you know get ourselves back up there uh, one more time. But again, to be number two and be the only school, the, the top school district uh, is something I'm very proud about. Um, on the budget, 24-25 budget, we're well on our way to uh, uh, of those stages. Uh, Dr. Clark and I met today, we talked about projections. She used her snow days to work on uh, staffing projections and did an excellent job having that ready. We sat down and went over it today and I told her to go ahead and turn it into Ms. Sappensley, <clears throat> excuse me, Ms. Sappensley because it's ready, ready to roll. Ms. Sappensley and I have met already more times than she probably wants to. Uh, we're looking at a couple of employee initiatives that I'll be bringing and sharing more information with you at, at a later date. Uh, a couple of things that I'm looking at to see uh, what we can do, uh, continue to do for our employees to uh, elevate our employees, hopefully um, elevate them um, beyond other school districts. So we're going to be looking at some of those things and see, see what's feasible. But um, she probably creeps when I call, when she sees my name light up on her phone. Like, Amy, can you come down? And I got another idea. And so, uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll be spending a lot of time together during, during that process, but she's doing a great job, off to a great start. This is Ms. Sappensley's first budget from zero to the end, so uh, she's, uh, I'm sure, excited and nervous about all that at the same time. But uh, if you all have CIP requests or any other request that need to be uh, in budget consideration while we're building this budget, please let me know that, and that way we can uh, try to find a cost, estimated cost, and, and include that. We are going to sit down probably in another week or so, if not this week, and start mapping out the CIP uh, five-year plan, moving stuff, shifting stuff, adding stuff. So if you have those kinds of requests that you would like to see in there beyond what's in there now, uh, please let me know that as soon as you can. Will you send that, those CIP things are on their existing, will you send those out to us kind of a I little can. bit ahead of time? Sure. That way we don't have to wait till the full budget comes out so we can see what's already on there. That and what's thing. already been done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah true. Well, that'd, that'd be and, helpful. And, and you have the plan, uh, the current plan, we have posted on our website, which yeah. shows what, what last year we were thinking of doing 
the next year and the next year. But obviously every year as we get closer, we adjust those things and some projects get delayed due to materials or whatever, whatever the case may be. I think we're pretty on target though uh, this year, but we can, we can send that out to you once we complete it prior to your one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, Ms. Appensley and myself. Yeah, that'd be great. And then, but if you have things in the meantime that you wanna see us consider that's not currently on there, if you'll let us know that, we'll start uh, looking, looking into that. Um, I just also wanna say uh, congrats to our teachers of the year. I don't think we've met since those were named. They've been uh, you know, publicized and uh, made Facebook famous like you all were yesterday about uh, uh, Tennessee School Board Week. But we have uh, Miss Willoughby at Arlington Elementary School, uh, Miss Powers at Donaldson Elementary, Miss Harvey at Arlington Middle, and Mr. White at Arlington High School. We also have our uh, principal of the year is Miss Tanya Hawkins, and our supervisor of the year is Dr. Clark. So they're now filling out their applications for this state. That's the thing, you win, but then you gotta do a lot of work to progress in the state competition. So they're, they're gonna be working on that. Um, we're also in the process of selecting our class act winners. Uh, you remember that's a classified award for classified employees that we also honor each year. Our Night of the Stars will be a little bit earlier this year. I think Mr. Gore probably sent you, saved the date on that, April the 4th. Uh, I will send you some additional information of why this date had to be moved up and uh, some, some details around that. So uh, you'll, uh, hopefully I'll get that out before the end of the week. And that concludes my report. And I'm gonna ask if uh, others have reports. Dr. Clark, I know you had a couple of things to share tonight. Good evening. Our sub rate uh, right now for the month of January, of course we've had some time off, it stands at 94%. We do have 100 substitutes on staff and 25 of those substitutes are fully certified teachers. A lot of them retire from our district and wanna come back and keep uh, supporting and giving back and that has been a tremendous help when we have employees that have to go out on leave to take care of personal needs and that way that allows us to continue the education and supporting students. On February the 20th, I will send you a follow-up calendar invite as well as a reminder. We have our Arlington Community Schools teacher job fair that night. Dinner will be served at 4.30, and then we'll have, they sign up for 5.15 and 6.15 slots. And so I know that some of you, you've always tried to be there if you can and you didn't have an, a prior engagement. Uh, that's a great time I introduce all of you and I appreciate it because they are very nervous when they come. And so our teacher leaders and having our school board members and our superintendent and other administrators in our district, you all put them at a lot of ease. And so that's a great opportunity for them to see why they would want to be part of the A team. Uh, I do have some recruitment scheduled for the spring, Union University, Ole Miss, uh, UT, MTSU, UT Chat, a lot of uh, Freed Hardeman. So I will be attending those uh, college fairs as well. So and that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm, thank you. Mr. Goldford, do you have a report? No report. Ms. Douglas. Uh, Mr. Ruff is absent. Ms. Speakman. Nothing. Okay, Mr. Hill. And that concludes the superintendent's report. All right, thanks, superintendent. Uh, financial reports. Uh, Ms. You've got had a chance to review that. I think from time to time, any questions from Ms. Sappinsley? None. Anything you want to tell us today, Ms. Sappinsley? All is well. Double thumbs up. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Uh, we'll move to uh, legislative liaison report. Mr. Dunn. Yeah, so as you all know, I did not submit a update for the month, uh, formula update, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, just as an overview, many of you know this, <clears throat> the General Assembly convened on January the 9th, and they established the deadlines for the filing of these bills for the House for January the 30th and the Senate for February 1st. And then some bills rolled in. On for those three days until the weather brought everything to a screeching halt. So there hasn't been as much activity as we had hoped, uh, but I think by next month 
there will be a lot more, and I'll have you all uh, a very, I think, exciting update. So uh, what I did want to mention, though, is for our legislative agenda. It has been submitted to Senator Rose and Representative Leatherwood, along with the members of the House and Senate Education Committee and subcommittee members. Awesome. Thanks, so sir. I'll have more stuff next month. That's cool. Sensation. <laughs> good. Yeah, there'll be a lot more happening. So Ooh, lots of good news. Yeah, that'll be good. I hope we get good news. <laughs> All right, we'll move on, move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move. Second. A motion by uh, Ms. Conley, a second by Dr. Biox. Uh, any, uh, any questions, any comments? I see none. Uh, all, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. The motion passes. Uh, business recommendation items. Mr. Mayo. Okay. Uh, business recommended item uh, 8A is the recommendation to approve the purchase of a 3D anatomy and virtual dissection platform from Anatomage, that's a hard word to say, incorporated in the amount of $114,865. Uh, $114, I'm going to read you a little uh, verbiage about that and I provided you with an explanation a uh, uh, much more detail probably than you wanted uh, but just for for the record I'm going to read what what that's about um, as part of the innovative schools model grant which is uh, grant money obviously this doesn't come out of the general budget it's money that's uh, been awarded to us through that innovative schools model grant one of the goals is to reimagine modes of learning when it comes to the healthcare labor market data shows a large need for future workers and while the healthcare career cluster is the largest at AHS, the need for more hands-on learning is needed. After researching what post-secondary institutions are using and seeing this item in action, the, this table provides a different way to learn about the human body, providing a different view of basic anatomy, allowing students to view and work case studies with the body, and utilizing actual uh, cadavers in a digital manner. I'm sorry, my eyes are blanking out on me in a digital manner to allow students to see a variety of scenarios. This piece of equipment will allow both students in the health science career cluster and those enrolled in anatomy and physiology to discover the human body in a new way and prepare them for the technology they will discover at the post-secondary level if continuing into the healthcare field. So if you, in, in short, if you can imagine a, an interactive seven foot long iPad, that's basically what this does where kids can interact with that and um, obviously we wouldn't be dissecting humans, you know, at the high school, but this allows that replication of what that would look like if a student went to college and, you know, had to go that far in, in a field of study. So anyway, with that uh, explanation, it is my recommendation that you approve uh, the purchase of this 3D anatomy and virtual dissection platform in the amount of $114,865. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You've heard his recommendation. Do you have a motion to approve? Mr. Chair, I would love to make a motion to approve this. Second. Motion by Dr. Biox, second by Ms. Conley. Any discussion? Um, I will just say that um, I've seen the older iterations of this. It's been around for several years. This is an amazing, amazing piece of technology. It is. And I've done gross anatomy, so I've dissected the human body, but this thing is light years beyond that. It's really, really cool. It's a big addition. Yeah, that's I, how cool is that? I mean, mm -hmm. that our high school students are getting exposed to things like this that you know they may never get into, or they, I'm sure it will also be, make some people go, oh, I don't know yeah. if this is for me or not, you know, yeah. which might be good. Maybe I'm out. <laughs> uh, but that's a good thing to know that too, you know, uh, rather than get into that and go into college. But man, what a cool thing that, uh, and especially coming through this grant process, that we get to add this to our uh, to our agenda for our students. Awesome. Anything else? All right. Uh, we'll take a vote then. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion passes. And with that, we are adjourned.